नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यू आर वाचिंग द न्यूज वेयर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्स ऑफ ऑल द डेवलपमेंट्स इन इंडिया एंड अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड लेट्स बिगिन विद द हेडलाइंस फर्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी लेज फाउंडेशन स्टोन ऑफ डब्ल्यू एच ओज ग्लोबल सेंटर इन जामनगर कॉल्स इट बिगनिंग ऑफ द एरा ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल मेडिसिन इन द वर्ल्ड PM Modi inaugurates state of the art dairy project in Gujarat dedicates new dairy complex and potato processing plant as well Finance minister Nirmala Sitharaman holds talks with IMF managing director meets Sri Lankan finance minister Ali Sabri Cabinet expansion in Pakistan 34 ministers administers oath PPP president Bilawal Bhutto Zardari not included among new ministers Sri Lankan Prime Minister moves proposal to curb powers of President Finance Minister Sabri seeks financial help from IMF anti government protests continue in the island nation and a quick look now at uh, some of the more important news as well no religious processions without proper permission says UP government after law and order review by chief minister yogi adityanath Uttar Pradesh and Haryana make uh, face masks mandatory in selected districts amid co- spike in COVID-19 cases. Sugar exports jump 65% corresponding to previous year says Union Minister Piyush Goyal. National Apprenticeship Mela 2022 to be organized across country on 21st of April. India's road infrastructure will be equivalent to America's by end of 2024 as per Nitin Gadkari. UP government rehabilitates 63 Hindu families displaced from Bangladesh in 1970. Seven children killed in bomb blast targeting educational institutions in Afghan capital Kabul. Over 700 children from 70 countries get not to climb Nepal mountains. South Africa announces state of national disaster after severe flood claims lives of over 400 people. United States decides not to enforce COVID mask mandate on public transportation. And now some news in detail. Prime Minister Modi on Tuesday laid the foundation stone of World Health Organization's Global Center for Traditional Medicine in Jamnagar. He said India's traditional medicine system of medicine is not limited to treatment alone, rather it is a holistic science of life. Prime Minister said the inauguration of the institution marks the beginning of a traditional medicine era in the world for the next 25 years. He said India is taking this global center as a great responsibility to serve the entire humanity. The center will help in providing better medical solutions to the world traditional medicines at a time when India is celebrating the Amrit Mahotsav of independence the prime minister also laid down goals for the new global center WHO ne traditional medicine ke center ke roop mein bharat ke sath ek nayi partnership ki hai ye traditional medicine ke kshetra mein भारत के कंट्रीब्यूशन और भारत के पोटेंशियल दोनों का सम्मान है भारत इस पार्टनरशिप को पूरी मानवता की सेवा के लिए बहुत बड़ी जिम्मेदारी के रूप में ले रहा है Prime Minister of Mauritius Pravind Kumar Jugnath and Director General of World Health Organization Dr Tedros were also present at the inauguration Jugnath said that the center will help in collecting information on traditional medicine data for policy formulation as well as standard and regulatory framework in his remarks the director general of WHO said it is a truly global project that will spread the traditional knowledge of India in the entire world center for traditional medicine that we are launching will help to harness the power of science to strengthen the evidence base for traditional medicine i'm grateful to prime minister modi and to the government of india for their leadership in supporting this important initiative and the investment of 250 million us dollars to establish the center with an interim office 
new location and building, and a 10-year commitment for operating costs. In view of the significance of natural products and traditional medicines, measures have to be taken to protect public health and address challenges associated with the effective monitoring of the safety of all herbal medicines. Prime Ministers of Bangladesh, Nepal and Bhutan also participated in the program through video conferencing. They expressed hope that the new centre will boost evidence-based research and standards of traditional medicine. The traditional medicine is practised in tandem with the modern medicine. We may expect better outcome in ensuring basic healthcare for all. One immediate need would be to study the decline in natural medicinal resources, which I feel is mostly aggravated by climate change and human habits. Global Center for the Traditional Medicine in India will serve to advance the knowledge and the practice of traditional medicines. In the Banaskanta district of Gujarat, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday dedicated several development projects to the nation. He also laid the foundation stone of the Banas Dairy Complex. The Prime Minister dedicated the new dairy complex and potato processing plant at Devda to the nation. More than 600 crore rupees have been spent on its construction. The Prime Minister said the Banas Dairy has been centre for empowerment of local communities, especially farmers and women over the years. He also appreciated the Bana Stadi for giving more focus to honey production. Bharat mein gaon ki arthi vavasthaon ko maataon behano ke sasakti karan ko kaise bal diya ja sakta hai cooperative movement yani sahakar कैसे आत्मनिर्भर भारत के अभियान को ताकत दे सकता है ये सब कुछ यहाँ प्रत्यक्ष अनुभव किया जा सकता है The Prime Minister also inaugurated the Banas Community Radio Station. The radio station will provide scientific information related to agriculture and animal husbandry to farmers. At Dama, the Prime Minister inaugurated the organic fertilizer and biogas plant. He laid the foundation stone of four gober gas plants of 100 ton capacity at Khemana, Ratanpura, Bhildi, Radhanpur and Thawar. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on Tuesday met the IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva. The talks included the impact of the current geopolitical situation on global growth. The IMF chief lauded India's policies that have helped the country's economy remain resilient even with a limited fiscal space. She also appreciated India's help to Sri Lanka in tackling its economic crisis and assured that the IMF would continue to actively engage with the island nation. The economic survey has predicted 8-8.5% uh, GDP growth in the current fiscal. The finance minister also met her Sri Lankan counterpart, Ali Sabri. She assured him that as a close friend and good neighbour, India will try to extend all possible cooperation and assistance to the island nation amidst its worst economic crisis. Sri Lanka, which is on the brink of bankruptcy, is grappling with an unprecedented economic trial, turmoil, the worst since its independence from Britain in 1948. In national news now, President Ramnath Kovind has given assent to the Delhi Municipal Corporation Amendment Act 2022. The act merges the existing three municipal corporations of Delhi. The president has also given assent to the Criminal Procedure Recognition Act 2022. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla was accorded a grand welcome by Chairman Wong Din Hu in the Vietnam National Assembly on Tuesday. The Lok Sabha Speaker is leading a parliamentary delegation to the country. Birla also visited the National Assembly building and the Din Hong Hall, where the annual meeting of the National Assembly is held. Niti Aayog held discussions with a delegation from Finland on strengthening cooperation between the two countries in various fields, especially in the energy sector. Finland has offered cooperation in energy and related areas such as grid balancing, air quality, storage and biofuels. State Bank of India has increased its marginal uh, cost-based lending rate by 10 basis points or 0.1%. The move will hike EMIs for borrowers. Other banks are also likely to follow suit by revising the lending rates in the coming days. 
India and foreign institutions will now be able to offer joint or dual degree programs. UGC Chairman Jagdish Kumar said regulations or cooperation between Indian and foreign educational institutions for award of joint or dual degrees has been approved. Indian institutions can collaborate with any foreign institution in the top 1,000 QS or Times rankings on higher education for joint degrees. In the case of uh, twinning programs, um, what we do is uh, uh, an Indian higher educational institution can collaborate with a foreign higher educational institution and a student can uh, physically go and visit the foreign educational institution, stay there for a semester or two and uh, obtain the credits up to a limit of 30% of the total credits required for a given program. We'll take a short break here, but coming up on the other side, Indian artists address the pain and the hope of the COVID-19 pandemic. Help us understand the concept of daylight harvesting and how did you think of that idea? I thought renewable energy is a good space to be in because that is the future of the entire world and for the country. I use the light as it is without doing any conversion. And if I can use that light for lighting up the buildings during the daytime, then such product and systems would be much more affordable. That is the, how the concept of daylighting has gone. Let's hear the story of startup Skyshade and its founder, Shekhar Nori. Criminal Procedure Identification Bill of 2022 proposes to empower police and prison authorities to take measurements of convicts and other persons for identification. You've only got now better identification techniques, that's all. It's an advance in civilization techniques of investigation. It would also shorten investigation cycles so that the police can give better quality investigation. How do you think we need to ensure that there is effective implementation of this proposed legislation? The rulemaking power, which was in the earlier act with the state government only, now the rulemaking power has been extended to the central government as well. Welcome back. Let's start with all the latest updates from the war front in Ukraine. Ukraine's President Zelensky says that Russia has begun the Battle of Donbass in the east and a very large part of the entire Russian army is now focused on the offensive. Ukraine media reported explosions along the front line. Shelling was also reported from Kharkiv in the northeast, uh, Mykolaiv in the south and Zaprizia in the southeast. Russia on Tuesday issued a new ultimatum for the defenders of the besieged port city of Mariupol to give up their resistance. Russia also claimed to have struck more than 1,000 targets in Donbass overnight, Ukraine said. Russian forces have also seized controls of Kremina in the Luhansk region. Russia's defense minister has accused the United States and other Western nations of supplying Ukraine with weapons so that it continues fighting until the last Ukrainian. At a meeting with the top military brass on Tuesday, he said that Washington and its allies are doing all they can to drag out Russia's special military operation in Ukraine. For the third consecutive day, Ukraine said it was unable to secure Russia's agreement to establish any humanitarian corridors to evacuate civilians. Britain has said that it will not consider the prospect of swapping a pro-Russian politician for two British fighters who were captured in Ukraine by Russian forces. The Ukrainian ally of uh, Russian President Putin is being held by Ukrainian authorities. U.S. President Joe Biden will hold a call with allies on Tuesday to discuss Ukraine, including on how to coordinate on holding Russia accountable, the White House said. And now some news from other parts of the world as well. Pakistan Prime Minister Sheva Sarif's 34-member cabinet was sworn in on Tuesday after several days of delay. Senate Chairman Sadiq Sanjurani administered the oath to new ministers. However, President Arif Alvi did not attend the ceremony. 
The new Pakistan cabinet was sworn in a day after it was originally scheduled after President Arif Alvi refused to administer the oath to the lawmakers. Pakistan People's Party's chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari was not among the ministers. 31 federal ministers and 3 ministers of state took the oath to join Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. Last week Prime Minister Sharif took the oath of office. President Alvi who is a member of former premier Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaaf party went on sick leave ahead of the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz leaders inauguration. Sharif's Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz got 13 ministries. Nine ministries have been given to Pakistan People's Party. Four ministries went to the Jamiyat Ulema-e Islam Fazl, while the Muttahida Qaumi Movement Pakistan got two ministries. Other coalition partners, including Balochistan Awami Party, Pakistan Muslim League Khaid, and Jamhuri Watan Party, got a ministry each. A member of the PPP and two members of PMLN were appointed advisers to the Prime Minister. Portfolio for the ministers are yet to be announced. Bureau report, Sunset TV. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha on Tuesday proposed to restore the 19th Amendment to the Constitution to curb presidential powers and empower Parliament as protests intensified in the island nation against his government over its handling of the economy. The Sri Lankan Prime Minister's office has said Mahinda Rajapaksha intends to propose a new constitutional amendment to the cabinet in order to fulfill the people's aspirations. He was referring to the 19A amendment that was scrapped after his brother Gotabaya Rajapaksha won the 2019 November presidential election. Adopted in 2015, 19A empowered parliament above the executive president. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha's announcement sets in motion a constitutional reform process by the Sri Lankan parliament. The reforms are expected to incorporate positive aspects of the executive the legislature and the judiciary on monday president gotabaya rajapaksha appointed a new 17 member cabinet that excluded his close relatives except for prime minister mahinda rajapaksha the system change comes amidst a growing demand for his resignation over the worst economic crisis faced by the island nation gotabaya rajapaksha admitted that decisions like banning chemical fertilizers in 2020 and not seeking an imf bailout has led to the current economic crisis sri lanka is grappling with unprecedented economic turmoil since its independence from britain in 1948 the crisis is caused in part by a lack of foreign currency which has meant that the country cannot afford to pay for imports of staple foods and fuel leading to acute shortages and very high prices bureau report sunset tv and let's now take a look at some other news from across the world quickly israeli fighter jets carried out a series of air strikes in the southern gaza strip while targeting a weapons manufacturing site for hamas the israeli ministry said on tuesday there were no reports of injuries the air strikes came in retaliation for pakistan palestinian militants are firing a rocket into southern israel for the first time in a month on monday the rocket launch was the latest escalation after clashes at a sensitive holy site in jerusalem a series of deadly attacks inside israel and military raids across the occupied west bank the united nation general assembly is convening on tuesday to debate a draft resolution backed by washington requiring the five permanent members of the security council to justify their use of the veto The resolution prompted by Russia's invasion of Ukraine is aimed at making Security Council permanent members cut back use of their veto powers. The US and other western countries say that Moscow's veto power has allowed it to paralyze action in the Security Council which is supposed to intervene in such conflicts as guarantor of global peace as defined by the Charter of the United Nations. Shanghai authorities on Tuesday reported seven more deaths from COVID-19 coming after three others were reported in China's most populous city on Monday. All seven people who died were elderly aged between 60 and 101, not vaccinated and all had underlying diseases. Shanghai reported 20,416 local cases, most of which were showing no symptoms according to the state broadcaster CCTV. Meanwhile, Japan on Tuesday formally approved Novavax 
COVID-19 vaccine, a fourth foreign developed tool to combat the infections as the country sees signs of a resurgence led by a subvariant of the fast spreading Omicron. The approval comes the day after its experts panel endorsed use of Novavax protein vaccine, which is designed with a similar technology used to fight diseases such as the flu and hepatitis B for the first two shots and a booster jab using Novavax vaccine are expected to start as early as late May. Venice Town on Florida's Gulf Coast had an unexpected visitor from the wild on Sunday. Sheriff's deputies captured video of a large alligator crawling through a front yard making its way into a community lake. Deputies estimated the gator to be approximately 10 foot long. The sheriff's office warned neighbors to be on alert because the alligator sauntered down to Harrington Lake to take an eastern morning swim. And now it's the turn of news from the world of sports. Starting with cricket first, Delhi Capitals' upcoming match against Punjab Kings on Wednesday has been shifted from Pune to Mumbai. The decision was taken by Board of Control for Cricket in India. The BCCI announced that it was changing the venue of the match to avoid any further incident due to any undetected case during a long-distance bus journey in a closed environment. The BCCI in its mail also listed the names of the five members of Delhi Capitals contingent who have tested positive for COVID-19. In the 31st match of IPL 15 being played at the D.Y. Patil Stadium, Navi Mumbai, Lucknow Super Giants are being challenged by the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Top spots in the point table is up for grabs in this particular clash. Both teams are at uh, eight points from six matches. Going into the match, Lucknow Super Giants are uh, placed third and Royal Challengers Bangalore are on the fourth spot in the points table. In an exhilarating IPL match played last night, Rajasthan Royals defeated Kolkata Knight Riders by seven runs. Rajasthan Royals put up 217 for five, betting first. Joe Spatla was again the top scorer with a superlative 100. Chasing 218 to win, KKR remained in contention until the very last over. Aaron Finch was with a half century and Captain Shreyash Ayer with 85 capped KKR's hopes alive. Yujwinder Chahel took five wickets, including a hat-trick. KKR fell just seven runs short with two balls to spare. Rafael Nadal is back in the training after a four-week rib injury layoff. Nadal had picked up the injury in his loss to American Taylor Fritz in the Indian Wells final in March 2022. Announcing uh, at, at the time he expected to be out for between four and six weeks, that defeat had ended his perfect 20-0 run to start 2022. Nadal's main focus will now be on being fit for the French Open, which begins in May 2022. Nadal has won the title at uh, Roland Garros 13 times. Competitors strapped themselves in for the car jumping competition in Southeast England on Eastern Bank holiday on Monday. The contest sees uh, venture car drivers uh, accelerating over a ramp in an attempt to fly over a line of assembled old cars and land safely on the opposite side. Several managed to take off and land safely with most of their car intact, but some fell from the sky and crashed into the line of wrecks to the delight of the crowd. Each attempt was judged on elevation, the reception from the crowd and, of course, the distance as well. The drivers took to their cars in order to test their metal and try to outdo each other. The coronavirus pandemic has been a source of inspiration for artists across the world. India is no exception. Artists here are expressing the pain and the hope of the last two years through their craft. Let's take a look. Corona yun bolya re dunya ko sab ka shikai dunga. Or jab tak dawa banegi tab tak to last pe last bhi chai dunga. Sensitive artists are distilling their pain caused by the COVID pandemic through their craft. Jumme Khan, poet, songwriter and singer from Penan village in Rajasthan, 
uses his gripping voice to give vent to express some of the darkest moments of the pandemic. One of his songs imagines a first-person voice for the virus that is narrating its thoughts. New Delhi-based sculptor Neeraj Gupta caught the virus and lost several close friends. His latest piece is a complex heap of skeletons from a single piece of wood titled Human Catastrophe. He wants his art to tell future generations what the world went through during the pandemic. In several Indian cities, large quilts made from small pieces of canvas and cloth cover buildings. They are commemorating frontline workers and displaying stories of the pandemic in Mumbai. Young artists from Mumbai, Dia Mehta Bhupal and Neha Modi, conceived this community project in the first weeks of the lockdown. Their idea was to connect people, discuss mental issues and provide a sense of togetherness at a time of fear and isolation. In Heritage City, Jaipur, artisans from the Corona Quilt Project created squares to give a sense of hope during hard times. India has reported over 4.3 crore cases of COVID-19 so far. Over 5 lakh people lost their lives. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And before we bring this bulletin to an end, let's take a look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Modi lays foundation stone of WHO's Global Centre in Jamnagar, calls it beginning of the era of traditional medicine in the world. PM Modi inaugurates state-of-the-art dairy project in Gujarat, dedicates new dairy complex and potato processing plant. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman holds talk with the IMF Managing Director, meets Sri Lankan Finance Minister Ali Sabri as well. Cabinet expansion in Pakistan. 34 ministers administered oath. PPP President Bilawal Bhutto Zardari not included among new ministers. And Sri Lanka's Prime Minister moots proposal to curb powers of President. Finance Minister Sabri seeks financial help from IMF amid anti-government protests which continue in the island nation. That's all we have in this edition of the news. We'll come back again tomorrow with all the details of happenings around the world and in India. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you. Criminal Procedure Identification